Hello YouTube! Today I'm super super excited because I have received a package in the mail that I have been compulsively checking the tracking website, keeping an eye on where it's at. I finally got this, uh, some new paint. I ordered the gouache 2.0 birch palette from Beam Paints um, and also some gorgeous handmade paper. So Beam Paints is super special because these are all small batch handmade paints um, and they're made by an indigenous lady in, I'm gonna say this wrong, Yumi? Chi Ging First Nation on Manitoulin Island in Canada. Um, so yeah, these are all handmade paints, really gorgeous on this reclaimed wood palette. I'm super excited to try it out. This is my first set of gouache. I normally, not really, I've been using watercolors during the pandemic. Uh, and gouache is very similar, but like the, the paint itself is opaque. So this is going to be a new experience for me. I've got a little dot card. And uh, here's the paper that I got also. Alright, so this paper's got some cream, grey, some darker grey, very white and brown and green. Let's just open it up. You can see, I don't know if you can see with this camera, but how like toothy and beautifully textured this paper is. Um, and down the bottom it's this beautiful rough uh, edge. I'm super excited to try the gouache on this like darker shade paper. So yeah, that's what today's video is going to be. Swatching these gorgeous paints. Alright, so today I'm going to do some swatches on this little Stillman and Burn notebook that I've got. I really like this notebook. I got it on Jet Pen's little website. Now I really like this book because the paper is very thick and quite smooth, which I like to paint on personally, but it's also not too expensive, so I find myself feeling free to experiment on it. So here I'm just putting some drops of water on the paints to activate them. Just going around this little palette. And here we go. I'm going to start with this nice bright yellow. It looks very pigmented in the palette. It comes out really bright. Having the white book on a black desk is a bit of a mistake. The contrast is kind of low here, but I'll show you a picture when I'm done with these swatches. Alright, I did these in a bit of a silly order, but now I'm going to swatch the white one right at the bottom here. Oh, you can kind of see it. Comes out quite well on the paper, but the camera doesn't quite pick it up. Now I'll just go around the rest of the palette and do a couple of lines of these nice circles. I sped up the video because otherwise this was going to take an age. I'm a very slow painter. So I've done the yellow, which is called Fall Poplar Yellow, and also the limestone white at the bottom. So this next one is cream, and then now I'm doing the pumpkin, which is a very vibrant orange. I don't think I've ever owned an orange paint before. I've always had to mix it from reds and yellows. But this one is just so beautiful and super, super pigmented. So the next one is Morning Peach. So it's kind of a creamier, paler orange with a little bit more red in it. Is that, is that right? I'm not sure. 
Anyway, this one came on really strong. And the next one is... Rose. This one's a very delicate colour. Uh, very white, almost. So, I tried to show these swatches on the webcam, but it kind of struggled with the white background, so I ended up taking a photo, which I'll flash up on the screen now. Alright, so moving around the palette some more, we have the Beach Rose, which is this really, really bright pink. I love it so much. <laughs> you can see um, how vibrant it is and it fades to a really nice color as well. Next up is Lavender, which is a beautiful lavender color, um, very soft purple. I'm gonna take another picture at the end and show it because I think that with this very white paper, the camera is not picking up the, the full vibrancy of these colors. Now this one's a sky blue, which um, when I first put it on with, you know, very little water, it's a very dark blue. And when it's watered down a bit, it, it truly is a very nice sky blue. This one here is the Robin's Egg Blue, which I actually already got when I bought the Birch Duo with gold um, a few months ago. I really like this one. It's very creamy color and it layers really well on top of watercolors. And this last one here is a Spring Leaf Green. I was really surprised when I first did this one because, as you can see, with a bit of uh, diluted <laughs> diluting it down a little bit it's almost like a bright yellow but I think you'll see as it dries it fades and becomes a bit darker to uh, go back to that green color but still yeah a very yellow green um, really beautiful color Alright, so here's the whole thing a little bit closer up. It's a bit saturated with the black desk in the background, so I'm trying to hold it against a white background. And I took another photo, which I'll flash up now. So yeah, overall, really beautiful and vibrant palette with these oranges and pinks and blues and a green. Now I want to try it on this dark grey papier canal paper. This is what I've been really excited about. Um, don't know if you saw me sniffing the paper earlier in the video. but <laughs> So uh, the reason I'm excited to try this is because it's my first gouache palette as I mentioned and I yeah I'm unused to uh, being able to paint on these darker surfaces with the usual transparent watercolours. Alright, so here we go. This time I'm going to start with the cream and then move around the palette. So um, the paints come on and are very vibrant on the paper. You can tell that this is gouache and not watercolour. Um, one thing to note is that the gouache does dry to a darker shade, typically, where watercolour, as it dries, it will fade and become lighter. So when these are wet, they look very bright on the page, but as they dry, they become a little bit more um, darker on the dark background, you know? So um, I eventually went back and went over some of these again. So I've done the cream, pumpkin, morning peach. 
The rose comes on and looks almost white on this dark grey paper. This one is the beach rose, that really vibrant like fuchsia colour. So I'm still getting used to controlling how much water there is on my brush and getting the consistency of the paint right. I've got this mixing plate up the top there um, that I really love. I just bought this plate just for mixing from a department store and um, it's a game changer. It's really, it's easier to tell what consistency the paint is when you've got all of this space to mix it up in. So I've done the lavender at the um, edge here and now I'm doing the sky blue which again comes on quite dark and now I'm doing the robin's egg blue which I absolutely love this color this is <laughs> I've been painting with this for a few months now and I really like it so now there's the spring leaf green That one that is a very yellow green. And finally the full poplar yellow. And actually I realized as I was editing this video and doing the voiceovers that I forgot to swatch the limestone white on this paper. So um, I'm gonna add that one in now and make sure that I get it in the picture. So these ones at the top, as they dried, they faded and I wanted to do a second layer over the top. I think if I, uh, when I'm painting on this darker paper, I'll probably be doing multiple layers to get that nice vibrant colour. Just gonna get that nice palette in view. You can see that some of the paint has spilled onto the wood, but I kind of like how it looks. It looks like uh, it's been used, and I like the way the paint kind of spills out and splatters around. So now I'm just going over a second layer on these bottom swatches, and here it is. I've just got the picture up on the screen again. And after this I just tried doing some mixes of the colours and did a little experimental page in my sketchbook which I'll show you quickly now. This one didn't show up so well on the webcam so I'll just rush through it and just show you the final product. So I managed to make some really pretty colours combining the oranges and pinks to make this nice dusty rose colour at the bottom and also the robin's egg blue and the spring leaf green made this really beautiful pastel green uh, which kind of reminded me of Yoshi, a Yoshi green. So thank you for watching this video, hope you enjoyed it and see you next time.